You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. You are totally relaxed, floating. You are in a deep, deep sleep and can only hear the sound of my voice. You are safe, relaxed, and at ease. Can you hear my voice, Alex? Yes. I would like to continue where we left off last week. Is that okay, Alex? Yes. Last week... You were telling me about a strange laboratory. Do you remember it? Yes. You described it as filled with instruments. Tell me about the instruments, Alex. They're metal. Mm -hmm. and shiny. Mm -hmm. There are lots of lights. Tell me about the lights, Alex. Are they bright? Yes. The lights are bright. Are there people in the room, Alex? Aliens? <gasps> yes. There are aliens. Come on. Shh, 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 shh. Sir, please. I'm allowing you to sit in, but please do not interrupt. Fine. Sorry. Can you describe the aliens for me, <gasps> Alex? Do they have big eyes? Yes. They have big eyes. And what did they do to you in the laboratory? Experiments. Uh-huh. What kind of experiments? I don't know. Were they medical experiments? <gasps> yes. Medical experiments. Oh, enough already. Sir, please. Okay, Alex. I think we're going to have to end our session now. I want you to wake up now. You are slowly awakening. Feeling better than before. I will count to three... And you will wake up. One, two, three. Did I talk about the aliens again? Yes, Alex. But I must say, I think we are making progress. <laughs> yeah, right. <clears throat> Alex, let me introduce Tom. Tom is an author researching a book on alien abductions, and he is very interested in your case. I... Have you ever been abducted? Can't say that I have. You should have Dr. Heisenberg hypnotize you. You never know. I think I'll take a pass on that one. Okay, then. Alex, I think we still have much work to do. Can I count on seeing you next week for our next session? Yeah, sure. I really appreciate all your help. That's fine, Alex. That's really fine. Now, remember to give a check to the receptionist on your way out and schedule your next week's appointment. Sure. Okay. I'll, I'll see you next week, Dr. Heisenberg. Yes, next week. Same time. Make an appointment with the receptionist and give her your check. Bye. Oh, it was nice to meet you, Tom. Yeah, good luck out there and in here. Sir, I must ask you to never disturb a session like that again. Session? <laughs> you call that a session? You essentially told him what to think and say. This is not the first time I've met with Alex. He and all of my other patients have been seeing me for years, and I have their experiences with abduction memories well documented. You can't expect me to start over with a patient just because you are here. Look, I appreciate the time, but I need hard evidence. All you seem to have are stories from people extracted with a methodology that looks to be anything but scientific. If you have nothing better to do than question my integrity, you do not need to return to this office. I don't even know you, and I thought you had a serious interest in this subject. Dr. Heisenberg, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Thank you for letting me sit in the comfortable chair and study your methods. And yes, I can guarantee you that I will never return to this office. I just hope that someday you tell that poor sap he's cured. 
Goodbye, Dr. Heisenberg. Hello, friend. Here is your invoice for today's session. And should I schedule you for the same time next week? Whoa, whoa. slow down. I'm not a patient. I'm researching a book. There's no reason for a bill here. You can pay with a credit card or debit card if you wish. 500 bucks? Is that what he charges for that scam he's got going in there? <laughs> this is a racket. We could send the bill to your home if you prefer. With the proper diagnosis, your insurance may cover part of the treatment. I'm not a patient. I'm not paying $500. I'm not coming back. Goodbye. Goodbye, friend. We'll see you next week, and I'll mail your invoice. Meet Mr. Tom Kalkin, a bad writer with a bad attitude and good intentions who pins conspiracy books that no one seems to read. He speaks to an audience driven by paranoia and does his research in a land of charlatans, frauds, and fakes. A man without money, without fame, searching for the story that will make his name and his fortune. His biography is as boring as his work, and his next contract may be his last. Desperation drives him, and lies define his truth. At least, until he finds his story in that place where all lies fail. A place where even the bright light of truth isn't always what it seems. A place called the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, The Walkabouts, starring Mike Starr with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Unbelievable. Hello. Tom, it's Maria. Oh, hi. Where are you? I'm sitting in your restaurant. We were supposed to meet today for lunch. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's been the, it's been a stupid day. I'll tell you about it when I get there. Please, don't leave. I'll be here. Bye. Bye. I don't want to get into these things. Sorry I'm late. I was meeting with the psychiatrist who specializes in alien abductions. Sounds fascinating. How did it go? It's all crap, Maria. The guy is an absolute charlatan. He's probably had more to do with creating the idea of alien abductions than helping the people who think they've been abducted. Okay, look. Um, we've got a problem. I've edited many books in my time, but I have never worked with an author who made such big promises and delivered so little. Wait a minute. Are you talking about me? Yes. Look, you pitched us an idea for a book about UFOs, and you said you had some evidence that was going to blow the lid off of Roswell, UFOs, and everything people have wondered about and feared on this whole subject of flying saucers. And all I ever hear from you are stories about charlatans, frauds, and fakes. I mean, what is this hard evidence you supposedly have? I mean, you have researched a book before, I assume. Maria, I really do have something. But it has to stay secret. If anyone but you and I even know I have something in my possession, I'm not the government, the military, the CIA, and God knows who else after me. That's a great story, Tom, but my publisher is starting to give me a hard time. We've given you a significant advance. We've covered lots of expenses and heard nothing but promises. I don't care if you're an established author. It is time to deliver a manuscript. Uh, <clears throat> Speaking of expenses... I think I owe that psychiatrist 500 bucks. What? His receptionist said they were going to mail me a bill for 500 bucks. Okay, this is what I mean. All I ever get from you are excuses, apologies, and bills. Where's the manuscript and where's the evidence? Look, you're the one pushing me for this whole alien abduction angle. What do we need it for? That's the hot topic right now. I have to have that component. You're the one making this difficult, not me. I knew you'd say that. It's always about someone else with you, so... I'm going to help you out. I found a guy you need to meet. I mean, if you can't find good sources, I'll find them for you. Who? He's a UFO researcher. Oh, great. 
Just what the world needs, another UFO researcher. I'm only going to say this once. You are going to meet with this guy, and you will present your manuscript and evidence to me in one month. Fine. I'll meet with him. What's he do? He's a hypnotist. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Have you listened to anything I've said? This guy is different. He goes out with small groups of UFO abductees, and they revisit the site of the abduction. He engages in hypnosis on site, in the field, and he has supposedly uncovered some hard evidence. He calls them walkabouts. Oh. Is he Australian? No. Oh, and let me guess. You're going to publish his book instead of mine. He's not writing a book, but if you don't come up with something soon, I might ask him. That's good. That's a good one, because the last thing anyone wants to see is another boilerplate book about UFOs and alien abductions from your publisher. You're getting a little cocky, and quite frankly, I don't appreciate it. Besides, my publisher sells what people want to read, and people read what we sell. Why do you think we're having this conversation? Look, you told me you had it all. All the evidence the world would ever need to know the truth about UFOs. Of course, you can't show it to anybody because it's so secret. But Tom, I'm telling you. If you didn't have so many books under your belt, I never would have bought into this. Is this how you've done all your books? Fine. I get it. I'll shut up. Who is this guy and where do I find him? His name is Tammuz. A what? T-A-M-M-U-Z. It's pronounced Tammuz. Maybe if you show him your evidence, he'll show you his. And we'll all be happy. Okay. I'll get a hold of him. Do it soon, Tom, and show him what you've got. I'll call him today. Good, and I'll see you in a month with the manuscript. Deal. Is it possible for you to pick up the tab? So, how do you know Maria? I'm a writer. She's my editor. I'm writing a book, and she suggested I meet with you. Let me guess, a book about alien abductions? Actually, it's about UFOs in general, but this alien abduction thing is a hot button with her, so here we are. How did you get interested in UFOs? Actually, I never gave them a thought until I had a little encounter. A close encounter? <laughs> That's an understatement. Any abduction flashbacks? Nope. It wasn't that kind of thing. I was fishing, hiking actually, in the Rocky Mountains. That's when the meteorite flashed across the tops of the trees and hit the side of a mountain. Let me guess, it wasn't a meteorite. It sure wasn't. I climbed up there to get a look at it and could see it was metal and aerodynamic. I thought it was a jet. Figured I'd climb down and tell the police about a plane crash until I started to look closer at the thing. And that's when you saw a flying saucer. Didn't look anything like a saucer, flying or otherwise. Just a tangle of mangled metal. But it sure wasn't a plane. That's when I heard a sound inside. I thought it was a survivor of the crash. It turned out, it was. A little gray man with a big head and large eyes? Didn't look anything like what you hear about. It was kind of mangled, actually. It stopped moving as I looked inside, and I could see pools of blood. Clear, blue blood. Sounds like alien royalty. Look, this may sound funny to you, but I know what I saw. Sorry, it's just that I've heard so many stories it starts to get old. Although yours has some new characteristics. It's actually a good story. Doesn't sound like much of a book, though. That's because it's more than just a story. Like what? I got pictures. That helps. And video. And parts of the wreckage. And I even wiped up a sample of the blood and put it in a plastic bag. In my freezer at home is a sample of alien DNA. In a box under the bed are parts and instruments from the craft. And on my computer are pictures and videos of the inside and outside of the craft. You're not making this up, are you? Nope. It's all real, and I got it all. Now, what do you got? What do you mean? That was a deal I made with Maria. I would tell you all about my evidence, and you would tell me all about yours. 
my friend. I don't think anyone on the planet has evidence like yours. Well, maybe at Area 51, but not in a box under a bed or next to the frozen pizzas in the freezer. Damn it, Maria! What? She told me you would help. That you would share your evidence. Let me guess. You got nothing. Hey, slow down, my friend. I'll show you what I got, but when it comes to pictures, videos, wreckage, instruments, and alien DNA, well, I gotta tell you, that's tough to beat. But give me a chance, we're almost there. Where exactly are we going? We're meeting with my group. We work together on various UFO projects. On this trip, we've brought along 12 people who claim to have been abducted by aliens. The site we're going to is where three of them say they were abducted. What's the point of that? Evidence. The evidence that both you and I are looking for. We found that if we return to the site of the reported abduction, some people can actually recall where UFOs supposedly landed, hovered, or demonstrated some phenomena or activity. We then go to that particular spot and look for evidence. Now we're talking. What kind of evidence? Pretty boring stuff compared to what you got. Usually we do soil samples, take readings for radioactivity, magnetic fields, pass metal detectors over the ground. We've managed to find some interesting stuff, assuming you're a soil chemist. That's it? You got dirt? I didn't say that. It's just a question of how you look at it. A UFO site can tell you a lot if you know what to look for. Speaking of that, is your crashed vehicle still sitting up there on that mountain? No, it's gone. I went back a week later and there was no sign of it. I hate when that happens. Are you sure you saw something up there? I saw it, I have pictures, and there is still some evidence up there. The kind of evidence you look for. The rocks on the side of the mountain. You can still see where they're scratched and gouged by the crash. But that's all you can see. I looked everywhere and there's no sign of anything else. I'd like to go there with you someday. The craft or whatever it was may have left some metallic particles on the rocks as a result of the collision. Do you remember where it is? I have it marked on a map. Back at home. In the box under the bed, no doubt. Where else would I keep it? You're a funny guy and obviously a man with a lot on his mind. I think you'll like this group of people we're about to meet. They've got a lot on their minds, too. Settle down, settle down. They'll be here soon. Ah, uh, hello, Tammuz. I was beginning to worry you were lost. It's gonna be dark soon. I wouldn't have gotten lost, not with all the racket this bunch is making. Enki, this is Tom. He's a friend of a mutual friend. Tom is writing a book about UFOs, and he's interested in our work. Ah, oh, it's nice to meet you, Tom. We have extra tents for unexpected guests, and I, I trust you'll be comfortable. Uh, we're about to eat. Please, both of you, join us. Quite a setup you got here. You planning to stay a while? Some of us, although I'm sorry to say the abductees only last a day or two on site. It can be a bit overwhelming for them, especially for the three who feel they were abducted at this place. You know, I don't know how to tell you this, but I had no idea this trip would involve camping. Sorry about that. We'll take care of you. I think we might even have some extra clothes for you, although it's more of a jumpsuit. That's okay. I'm not planning to stay that long. Just long enough to see what you got. Fair enough. Let's have something to eat, and then we'll figure out how we're all going to proceed. If I could have your attention, please. Thank you all for joining us. I know this is difficult for some of you, but I can assure you, you're in good hands, and my hope is that our walkabout will be brief and uneventful. I'd like to introduce a special guest. Our friend Tom here is an author preparing a book on the subject of UFOs. If you'd like, I'm sure he would be fascinated by some of the stories you have to tell. Welcome, Tom. Um, hello again. Uh, hello there. Did you remember to make your appointment for next week? Yes. And I'm really looking forward to it. 
I'll bet you are. Friend of yours? It's starting to look that way. His name is Alex. I seem to keep running into him. Welcome, Alex. Hello. And to all of you, a warm welcome. Once we finish our dinner, we'll change into some gear for our adventure. We're going to engage in an exercise with group hypnosis tonight. Our goal is to understand what you have all experienced and to see if we can trace the behavior of the various crafts you have seen and find any signs of their presence on this spot. My good friend Anki and some of my other associates will be using instruments to determine if our visitors have left anything behind for us to collect. Let me reassure you once again, these walkabouts tend to be quiet and gentle affairs, and I trust this evening will be no different. Now, let's enjoy our meal and then begin. That's it? Group hypnosis and you guys run around with instruments in the dark? Is this gonna be another waste of time? My friend, it is not a waste of time. I'm sorry you're in such a hurry and I can't help you with your deadline or your editor. Let's just hope we find some good evidence for you tonight, and then you can get to work. Tom, I've laid out some clothing on a cot in your tent. You can change when it's convenient for you. Right now sounds like a good time. Tom? Hey, hey, Tom! Wait up. Oh, it's you. Um, is this how you spend most of your time? Well, Dr. Heisenberg recommended I try this form of therapy. Heisenberg? He doesn't seem like a guy who would want to lose a paying customer to a competitor. What? What are you talking about? Uh, that's not important. So, uh, are you one of the people abducted from this place? No. I, I don't remember where my abduction happened. Dr. Heisenberg is trying to help me remember. I'll bet he is. Wonder how much that's gonna cost you. Oh, it, it, it's not about the money. It, it's about finding the answer. Well, that's one thing we both agree on. Well, this looks like my tent. Uh, you were uh, doing the camping thing too? Oh, we, we, we all are. I, I don't think we have a choice. Uh, we walked here and... Uh, I have no idea how to walk out. Yeah, I know what you mean. For some reason, I don't like the way this is set up. Do you know anything about these people? No, uh, Dr. Heisenberg set it all up. Uh, he's, he's a really good person, you know. Uh, he's always looking out for me. Whatever you say, Alex. Oh, man. He said jumpsuit. He meant it. Looks like something you wear in jail. Uh, I think it's to protect us from a dangerous chemical residue in the soil. You're starting to sound like Tammuz. Oh, actually, uh, Enki told us that, and uh, I'm not taking any chances. I, I, I'm going to put uh, mine on now. I'll see you again, okay? Yes, I'm sure you will see me again. me to call? No, I saw your name on the caller ID. Did you show Tammuz your evidence? No, but I told him about it. That's why I'm calling. Maria, this guy's got nothing. He's as big a fraud as that quack psychiatrist I saw yesterday. And hey, hey, you know what? These two are connected somehow. Heisenberg has lots of connections. He's actually somewhat famous, but obviously he didn't impress you. Yeah, um, yeah, obviously not. Um, Look, look, Maria, uh, I'm going to give this my best, and then I'll get right to work on that manuscript, okay? Are you all right, Tom? I mean, is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine. I'll see you in a month, okay? Tom? Okay, that's our deal. Tom! Oh, ooh, sorry, Tom. I, I didn't know you were on the phone. Yeah, I'm, I'll talk to you later, Maria. Goodbye, Tom. I'm very sorry. Was that your wife? No, 
I'm not married. Someone I'm working with, uh, maybe you've seen her. Her name is Maria. Maria? Oh, sorry, I, I, I don't know anyone named Maria. Yeah, but somehow she knows Heisenberg. Mm, lots of people see psychiatrists. Yeah, the only thing is, I never told her the name of the psychiatrist I was meeting with, yet she knows his name. You sure you never saw a woman named Maria around the office? I... I, I, I don't know. I, I, I... You sure you don't know some way out of here? Oh, gosh, no, especially now. I mean, it's pitch dark out here. Yeah, it sure is. I feel like an idiot in this jumpsuit. Alex, I'll tell you what. What? I like you. You're a nice guy. It's a relief to hear someone say, I don't know, every now and then. Well, thank you. Uh, I don't have many friends. Yeah, sorry about that. It must be tough. Look, tomorrow morning, you and I are walking out of here. What? Going to be able to do that? Shouldn't we tell someone? I don't think so. Now let's go get this over with. Who knows, maybe you'll figure out where your abduction took place. Oh, that would be great. Hello, my friends. I see you're wearing our group attire. So how come we're all dressed in white and Tammuz and his buddies get the blue jumpsuits? I don't know. I like the blue ones better, too. Please, my friends. I would like to ask all of you to recline on the cots that we've arranged here in the circle. Tom, I wonder if you'd like to join this session. I'm curious if there are any memories from your fishing trip that have eluded you. I don't think so, and if you don't mind, I'll pass on the mass hypnosis. I'm here to find evidence, not become a part of it. Suit yourself. Is there anywhere special you'd like to sit or stand? Back here is fine. I'll watch from a distance. Good luck there, Alex. Have a nice nap. Thanks. I'll see you later, Tom. Right. My friends, please, if you'll take your positions and simply lie down. Get comfortable, please, and be at ease. I want to begin by asking you to close your eyes and relax. Relax the muscles in your face and feel the tension go out of you. Relax. Feel your shoulders and arms slowly relax and allow your body to relax down your back, to your legs, to your feet. Relax. Hello? Maria, it's Tom. I know. Maria, I don't like this. What did you get me into? And by the way, how do you know Heisenberg? What exactly am I doing here, Maria? What are you talking about? This outfit is like a cult. There's no science here, and there sure isn't any evidence. And how do you know Heisenberg? Maria, I never told you his name, but you knew that's who I was talking about. And he's connected to this Tammuz guy somehow. Tom, you're starting to sound like a conspiracy nut. Maria, I am a conspiracy nut. I'm writing a book about UFOs, remember? You publish books about UFOs. Your business is built on paranoia. So spare me the lecture and tell me how you know Heisenberg. So maybe I need counseling from time to time. Tom, get over it. You're looking for monsters in the closet, and I'm not one of them. Ugh, I'm starting to wonder if any money is worth all this. Hey, if you want to bail on the contract, be my guest. We'll total all the money from your advance and all of your expenses and subtract it from the royalties of your other books. But get this in your head right now. This is the last book you will never write. Hey, uh, I'm sorry. I don't know why I called. I guess I just don't know what to believe anymore or who to believe. Look, when I get out of here, I'll, I'll finish the book. If I learn anything tonight, I'll add that as well. Tom, do me a favor. Don't call me again until you have the evidence and the manuscript in hand. I don't need the aggravation. I need the story you threatened to tell and the evidence you found to support it. Got it? Got it. Bye. Threatened? Come on, babe. It was just a book proposal. Light in your mind. The bright light lifted you. See it. Believe it. 
know it is there. The light approaches and will take you up to where all is well. Tom! Tom! Alex? Is that you? Where are you? I, I'm here! In the bushes. He said to be comfortable, and I'm comfortable when you're around, so I had to find you. Alex, you're missing out on your session. I don't want to do this. This is bad. Good. Alex, you're starting to get it. This is a scam, and that's bad. No, I mean really bad. Look! Oh my god! What is that? As the chariot descends to receive you, you will allow yourself to be lifted up. Feel yourself rising into the light. This is the place. This is where I was abducted. This is where it happened to me. I was lifted up into that circle of light. Alex, they're faking this. No. It's a spotlight and a hot air balloon and a lot of reverb through a speaker. What? All cheap theater and just another way to get money out of people. How much did they charge you for this camping trip? They didn't charge us anything. Oh, I was afraid you'd say that. So why are they doing this? Maybe it helps to sell books. Oh my god, that's it. That explains it. Alex, these people are just perpetuating the myth of UFOs to make money on fear. We have got to get out of here. Did anyone see you come over here? I don't know. It's... it's dark. That's why I couldn't find you. That's good. That gives us a chance. They're not gonna want a writer saying all this. Come on. Go slow, go quiet, and follow me. I'm afraid. Don't worry about the light. It's just a spotlight. What we have to worry about is what your friends will do to us. They're not gonna want people to know about their little ruse. It would put them out of business, including you, Dr. Heisenberg. I don't think they're ready to go out of business yet. Not because of us, at least. Oh. You okay? I fell. It's okay. Go slow. Stay with me. Tom, look! All right, their balloon and their light's coming our way. I don't remember this part. This isn't about aliens, Alex. I don't want to go up there again. You won't follow me. Go slow. Don't talk. Alex, we have to run. They're coming our way. We won't get away. We will if they don't find us. Look. What's that? Looks like a cliff. If we find an overhang, that'll block the light. Get down on the ground. I think I found an opening. Good man, scoot in there. The light is right over us. Yeah, just enough to help us see. Keep moving back. See a light. Don't worry about it, Alex. They can't see us. No, no. I see a light in the cave. What? We should go back out. Come on. That's not an option right now. Let's go see what's in here. Might be a mine or something. This part of the area is loaded with them. We'll hide in here overnight and then hightail it out of here in the morning. I see a light bulb. Yeah, we're in a mine. I just can't figure out why they're still running power to it. There might be someone working in here, so just be cool. I remember a cave. When I was abducted, I think I was in a cave. Dr. Heisenberg helped me to uncover it. Alex, you're done with Heisenberg. Heisenberg is a fraud. This is all a big scam to squeeze money out of a gullible public and to rip off poor souls like you. You are correct, my friend. Heisenberg, you soulless bastard. What are you doing here? You are part of this. You're destroying people with this charade. Can't you find another way to make money? On that count, you are right and wrong. Yes, this is a charade, but not the kind you think. Ah, hello, Tammuz. Hello, Enki. I seem to have found your missing friends. I am sorry. With such a large number of subjects, it was difficult to herd them all effectively. Herd them? 
What are we, cattle? No, if that were the case, you would probably have been mutilated. Maria, this is impossible. What are you doing here? This is like a law school prank. Am I on some kind of TV show? It's not a prank, and you're most definitely not on television. For that matter, you will never be on television, especially your videotape. It looks like a treasure chest. That's the box I had under my bed. You've been to my home. Yes, and thank you for making it so easy for us to find what we needed. Unfortunately, we found nothing of the evidence you described to Tammuz. Is it possible you have it hidden somewhere else? Sorry, pal, but there's nothing to hide. I made it all up. Sorry, Maria, but it's a tough game out there for writers, and you editors aren't exactly easy to please. By the way, Maria, how did you get hooked up with these crooks anyway? Let's just say we have common interests. So, this is how you know Heisenberg? You're all part of a money-making machine that preys on paranoia. Your publisher, his practice... How long have you people been in business? Actually, we've been in business, as you say, for about 50,000 years. I must say, it used to be much easier. But as your species and technology has improved, we've had to improvise some interesting new solutions to cover our tracks. You people are crazier than Alex. I'm not crazy. This is all real. Alex, you're going to be fine. I'm sorry that we had to use you in this way, but you have done a very good job. I don't know what I did. That's because you were under the influence of a very powerful hypnotic suggestion. Sleep now, Alex. Sleep. Oh. Alex! It's okay, Tom. Just relax. Tammuz, Henke, please. Carry Alex outside and send him aboard. It is his time. Who are you people? Well, for one, we are not people. We are, in fact, those aliens that you're so skeptical about. We are the Anunnaki. Many of us have been genetically modified to fulfill our mission on your planet. Now this is the book I should write. What do you say, Maria? This would be a hell of a story. I'm afraid this is a story that can never be told, my friend. Friend. I've been hearing that a lot. What's the story with this friend thing, and what are you going to do? Kill me? You kill your friends? That's a little serious for scam artists, don't you think? Now, oh, who are you, really? It would have all been so much easier if you'd just told me you'd fabricated the evidence. Tom, we believed you. Are you kidding? You actually thought I had evidence of UFOs and aliens? Come on. We're all in the same business here. So I had my little scam with the book, and you got this deal going on. We can work together here. But hey, no more of this messing around with people's heads like you did with Alex. Let's just be cutthroat editors and writers. Maria, I'll be a top writer. In fact, I can write this stuff better than you folks are doing it right now, if you want to know the truth. Ah, uh, yes, the truth. You know, my friend, maybe it's time you did learn the truth. It's obviously something you have had little experience with. Take Maria, for example. Oh yes, she does publish books. Books that we approve of, of course. Books that make the authors seem like madmen and lunatics. Quite frankly, if you had come to Maria with a book claiming to have visited Venus, you would be in print by now. But instead, you really got our attention. Every now and again, someone like you shows up with some real evidence that we missed. That's when we have to take action. You see, that's one of our secondary missions. Making sure that our experiments are not discovered. That's why we assume the role of UFO researchers and experts on abduction. You see, Tom, we found that the best way to obscure the truth is to pretend to seek it. It sounds like our friend Alex has made his final journey. That is actually our primary mission. We are harvesters, in a way. You're going to kill him, aren't you? That's what you do with friends. He may be gone soon, but his DNA will live forever. It's necessary for our survival. You too will live forever, Tom. You are one of the chosen now. You are now our friend. What are you, serial killers? 
You have nothing to fear, really. The whole process takes about 10 to 15 of your years. Alex was first harvested at a very early age, so his time is now. For you, you will still have some time left. It will be a time of some confusion, but all for the best, really. All for the best. You're going to kill me too? Like I said, you will have some quality of life for 10 to 15 years. And then, yes, you too will be harvested. Right. Harvested. But before I go, I have one question. Can I get an answer to one question? Sure, why not? After today, you will only remember what we allow you to recall as a new member of the abductee class. What's your question? It's just this, um, how many people will it take to pull out the fingers I'm about to bury in your throat? It's all clear. He is unconscious. This was a difficult one. They are proving to be a greater and greater challenge. The growing sophistication of their technology, their increased awareness of our presence. We may need to initiate another world war or create a new pandemic. We can't allow them to have too much time to think. Does that mean we should terminate the terrorism initiative? It's quite possible. In the meantime, let's increase the number of stories about super volcanoes, asteroids striking the Earth, and global warming. Keep the fear alive. And Maria, you seem to have developed some affection for this one. That can't be allowed. I know, I will do better. Sometimes they're like pets to me, and I just seem to become attached. Ha. Spoken like a true editor. But you may have to have additional contact with this one, so keep your perspective. Okay. Now, back to work. We are staging a UFO convention in Mexico City, and I am recommending additional investment in the Alien Museum in Roswell. Enki, we will need your banking network to provide some additional funding for a documentary on a coming ice age. Let's really mix it up out there and keep these animals off balance. Tammuz, if you could clean up the campsite and sanitize any evidence, we can all get back to work. Do we have a site for the next harvest? Chicago, Illinois. Make the necessary arrangements. to see you again it's nice to see you too please go in the doctor is expecting you hello dr heisenberg hello tom how are you feeling today i think i'm getting worse i think i need more sessions with you let me ask you something tom do you still believe you have been to jupiter i don't know it doesn't make any sense to me. It's a gas giant. You can't breathe there. Well, if the alien technology you have described in our sessions is as advanced as you believe, anything would be possible, wouldn't it? I think you're right, Dr. Heisenberg. Tom, I must tell you, you have a way with words. Have you ever thought about writing a book about your adventures? No one would believe me. People want to believe, Tom. That's all that matters. I know an editor who I think would be very interested in your story. Your story about Jupiter. Why don't you meet with her? I could set it up for you. Okay. Then it's settled. Now, let's begin our session. Close your eyes, and you will go into a deep sleep. Deep. Deep, deeper, deep, deep.
The evidence is in. The facts are fiction, and the truth has become a footnote to a lie. Is it possible that we are, in fact, alone in the universe? There may be a time when we wish we were, especially after a brief walkabout to that place known as the Twilight Zone. The Walkabouts, starring Mike Starr with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was especially written for The Twilight Zone by Steve Newby. Heard in the cast were David Pasquese, Joby Cerny, Leah Mortensen, Richard Hensel, Linda Kimbrough, and Tim Dadabo. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Joby Cerny for Falcon Picture Group. Sound design, custom Foley effects, recording, and editing are done in the Cerny American Sound to Picture Theater by sound designers Todd Beyer, Craig Lee, and Tim Cerny. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug Jane speaking.